Hi, I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. This morning we're out on the UC Riverside Citrus Varietal Collection Block. This is our friend Robert Kruger. He's the uh, curator of the USDA germplasm block of citrus here in Riverside. So um, we're looking at a variegated pink flesh lemon here. And uh, the variegation is something that uh, we occasionally see as a mutation on various things. We have variegated lemons, variegated sour oranges, variegated valencias, and variegated navels. Uh, the variegation always produces a weaker tree just because we can't get as much photosynthesis out of it. So lemon is probably least affected just because lemons are so vigorous anyway. This one's also interesting because the immature fruit also are um, sectored between green and yellow uh, flesh. We cut it open. We also have a mature one here which has lost the uh, variegation. And so this guy, the immature one, does show the pink color. And if we look at the mature one, you can see that, well, this one's over, this is over, overripe, but you can see that as a mature fruit, it will also maintain the pink color. However, if you make juice for it, you do not get pink lemonade, you just get regular color lemonade. I think this has always been a, an interesting variety to me because it really falls into the category of edible ornamental. Right. This is a calamondin. The calamondin is thought to be a cross, naturally occurring cross between a kumquat and a mandarin. So these are also native to southeastern Asia and the islands around there, Malaysia and Indonesia. And uh, they can be consumed, but um, you know, people here in the U.S. don't really have a, a tongue form, so to speak. They make a nice looking tree. You've got some small bright fruits and kind of an upright um, columnar type of, of growth on them. Uh, to the, um, my right, we have the variegated version of the same thing. And again, this would make a nice uh, looking ornamental tree in somebody's yard. Um, with um, immature variegated and mature orange fruits on it. Yeah, real, uh, real uniform uh, variegation to the foliage and that nice, uh, wonderful little variegated fruit makes it a real nice edible ornamental. This is the seedless kishu, or in Japanese, makaka kishu. It's a small mandarin. Uh, these are obviously immature right now in October but they won't get a whole lot bigger than this even around February when they're, when they're ripe. And they are very easy to peel at that time. They're seedless and they're really sweet. So you can take one of these and eat the whole thing, you know, in one bite and have a nice little refreshing piece of fruit. So they're a good backyard tree. Uh, this is a Miwa kumquat. Um, kumquats are, uh, again, native to China and uh, they are native to more of a northern part of China. So these are actually fairly cold tolerant compared to a lot of our citrus. The kumquats are actually a related genus, Fortunella, and they're interesting because they have a sweet rind, and that's why you can eat the whole fruit, as, as Tom is doing here. Um, kumquats tend to be a small tree, and a lot of people can grow one in a pot in their backyard for years and years with no problem. Uh, the mi Miwa is a round type, and the Gami is an oval type. We now have a um, the so-called giant seedless Nagami which um, I'm not going to show you today, but it produces a little bit bigger Nagami fruit that's seedless. I have a, Robert, I have a Miwa in a barrel, in a half barrel, actually on trifoliate that I've had now for 28 years. It's actually lived through, I've had to replace the barrel four times <laughs> because the barrels rotted out underneath mm -hmm. it. So I just keep it, you know, nice and rounded off and uh, produces 150, 200 fruit every year. And it survived the uh, December, uh, 1990 uh, frost without a whole lot of issues and uh, just a wonderful plant. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a trifoliate orange. The trifoliate oranges are not truly um, oranges, but they kind of look like oranges. So they're called trifoliate oranges starting, you know, over 100 years ago. And they're very important for use as a rootstock. This is a particular type called flying dragon from Japan. And as you can see, the um, branches are very uh, twisted and uh, tortuous, as are the thorns. Uh, citrus very commonly has thorns, but doesn't usually have this really curvy type of thorn. Here's a nice looking example right here. And try, or flying dragon is interesting too, because it'll produce a fly or a dwarf tree when used as a rootstock. So if you bud onto flying dragon tree, after um, 10 or 20 years, you might have a six foot tall tree is all, so. Would you say, Robert, that the dwarfing characteristic on flying dragon is pretty uniform, uh, spread out amongst the different citrus varieties grafted onto it? Um, for the most part, yes. Yeah, some of them um, are less dwarfed than others, but the common types of sweet oranges and the mandarins that you use will definitely be a small tree. This is um, 
Mauna Loa grapefruit from, from Hawaii. And um, this one is always interesting because it consistently produces some of our largest um, fruit on the field station here. These are a good sized fruit, but they sometimes will get maybe almost 50% larger than this. Um, these are last year's fruit. You can see here's, a, here's another one. And it's not a particularly interesting tasting fruit, but it's you know, a lot of fun to look at. Is this a pink flesh or a yellow flesh? Yeah, it's, pink. Like it's pink. Yeah, it's pink flesh. Yeah. This is a sepal um, orange. It's from Brazil. It's a sweet orange. There's nothing particularly interesting about the fruit, but the tree itself has what they call a recumbent growth habit. So it's kind of what people would describe as weeping. Instead of growing up, the branches tend to curve downwards. So the tree stays very small and compact. Yeah, it really does have a very nice pendulous compact growth habit would make a really nice ornamental. Yeah, um, and the fruit, there's nothing great about it, but certainly a you know nice enough fruit to have as a sweet orange comes mature about December, January. There's another type in Brazil, which I've not personally seen, but I'm told grows like a vine. So um, there's still unexplored stuff that we don't have here in the collection yet. Is this uh, seedless or seedy? This is a seedy type, unfortunately. Yeah, but good, good juice? Good juice, yeah. Very nice. Right now we're standing in a row of pummel seedlings. Pumos are a type of fruit that some people describe as being kind of like a grapefruit. They're from Southeast Asia and they're consumed a lot in places like Vietnam and Thailand. Uh, this row of trees was uh, propagated from some seeds received quite a while ago um, from some people that were doing plant and exploration in Vietnam for other purposes. And they came back labeled boy. Well, I found out since then that boy is the uh, generic Vietnamese word for pumelo. Uh, about uh, six or seven years ago, we had a visitor, Dr. Trin, from Vietnam, and we were showing him these pumelos, and he said that this particular seedling tree resembled their Vietnam variety, which was called Nam Roy. Nam Roy means five hits, and the reason it was called this is because this tree was growing in the village, and the fruit was so good, the boys in the village would climb up the tree to steal the fruit. When the owner would find them, he would hit them five times with a stick, but the fruit was good enough that they'd risk his beating with the five blows in order to get the fruit, and that's why it was called Nam Roy, or Five Blows. Oh, that's a great story. This is Weber Shaddock, and this is one of our, um, I'll call at this point only a semi-mystery because we think we figured it out. Um, one of our former colleagues, Ms. Tutsbeer and I, discovered this out in an abandoned uh, date retail outlet near Indio, Jensen's Date Garden. All the signs were falling over, so we collected things we looked interesting and hoped that the signs corresponded more or less to what they was. This was called Weber Shaddock. It's something we did not have in Riverside, and it's definitely a Shaddock or a grapefruit pomelo type thing. And I was recently in Florida and observing it um, in Florida, and it seems to be what they're calling Weber in Florida seems to correspond with this. And this is actually a pretty nice tasting fruit. It might be a little early, so I'll taste it myself rather than subjecting anybody else to it. <laughs> well, I'll try it. Nice flavor. A little early, a little crunchy, but mm -hmm. nice flavor. Yeah. I can see that where that would pick up a lot of character in about another six weeks. Right. This is another historical variety. Um, this is uh, propagated from a tree down at the Awatibia Ranch in Pala that's over 100 years old. So this is a Valencia type orange and might represent an earlier type of Valencia than those we commonly grow now. So it's still a small tree, so we don't really have a lot of data or information on it, but it's interesting for, because of its historical roots. Well, Robert, throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to tour the variety collection many times, and it's always a pleasure, but I'm real glad to have the opportunity to come in here today and tour it with you and show some of our viewers some of the more interesting and unusual things from the citrus industry. Thank you very much. My pleasure.